Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a very special lunch hosted by the TV Collective. I'm Eddie Bozio, and we're here at BAFTA's headquarters in Piccadilly, and the clinking you can hear in the background is us being served our very special lunch. We are sat in a rather fabulous room around a table. To my left is the one and only Damien Jones. He's one of the UK's leading film producers. Many of you will know him for Kid Adulthood, for Adulthood, and for most recently, Bell. Now, we're going to talk to Damien about his career. He's going to give us some advice on making progress and making films in the industry. But first of all, we'll start with Damien and say, Damien, where did it all begin? How did you get into this industry? From the, the bottom up. But firstly, thank you for having me. I'd also, if you don't mind, before we dive in, I'll obviously answer your question, but I'd love to know who's here and uh, what you all do. Do you want to do a quick round table, a quick, just introduce yourself, tell us who you are, what you do. Going to the left. Hi, I'm Lindsay Johns, writer and broadcaster. Miriam Kelly, production accountant. Angela Ferreira, TV producer and live events producer. I'm Jonathan Hansler, comedian, actor, screenwriter and playwright. By Breen Samuels, writer, author and publisher. I'm Leslie Lee, I'm a TV producer and a writer. I'm Kelvin Richards, director of photography. I'm Toral Dixit, I'm a documentary producer and director. I'm Ida Ashva, I work in diversity and inclusion for creative skill set. Anne-Marie Goodwin, a broadcast producer, director and have one feature film under my belt. Uh, I'm David Say, I'm an actor, writer, director and now transitioning into filmmaking. My name's Anne Dieppe and I'm a screenwriter. I'm Philip Briffitt, I work in digital advertising. I'm Clara Luca, I'm a, on the board for Buff, British Urban Film Festival. Hi, I'm Leon John Baptiste and I'm the founder of an online platform for black aspiring filmmakers. So Damien, back to the question. <laughs> <laughs> you started from the bottom, you were saying. I cut my teeth on, well, two ways, sort of, I was fortunate enough to get on-set experience as a runner and a runner driver and back in those days when you were allowed to drive cast and then i was able basically working title films who were starting you know starting out and being quite successful kept me in house too so i went around the office but what it allowed me to do over time was see both sort of physically how a film is realized i.e the on set experience um, but also after sort of learning what I could there, I was able to see actually what involved to get to that point, i.e. development and finance. Over time, I was able to sort of see who to go to financially and then the development process and how important that was and crucial and critical and, you know, if you don't start with a good script, you're never going to get a good film. I was a bit spoilt because I was able to see both sides. A lot of people sort of work in one and not the other. So it was a good sort of training ground. At what point did you think, I'm going to be a producer and these are the kinds of films I want to make? Where did, where did that come together? It, it, it took, I mean, a long time. J just to go back, to put in context, I mean, there are some people who, you know, found better things to do with their lives, but <laughs> the two other guys I worked on reception and washed up teacups with at Working Title, one of them is now the producer of the Marigold Hotel mm -hmm. movies and In Bruges and others, and the other one um, produced the Billy Elliot uh, movie, and indeed is a producer on the musical. And we all started off together, you know, we all, so it's nice getting together every few years just to remember, you know, back in the day. Um, <laughs> frankly, the first couple of films I started out with trying to raise money for, you know, I was blessed that they never got made um, <laughs> because they were bad, you know, they were not, not Care to good. to share what they were? One was like a hitchhiker sort of serial killing, um, <laughs> And in fact, the director of it was um, Jonathan Glazer. Right. Um, and I'm sure he's happy that it never got made either. But, you know, we were just learning and it just wasn't, you know, it was a genre piece, it wasn't very good. And, you know, I, and actually over the years, and it's true now as it was then, the, you know, I, there always is, I believe, a reason why your film happens or doesn't happen. And a lot of the time you don't realise it, obviously, and it's on reflection and in hindsight. But it's frankly, and, and you know, this goes with my own slate, as well as anyone else who's, um, you know, tried and still trying, it's because it's not good enough. It's still not good enough. Now, it's either in the material, in the screenplay, the director, the cast, the budget, you know, the, the way you're going about it. It's too expensive, it's too cheap, it's not ambitious, it's too ambitious. But there's always a reason, because you're always competing, even though, you know, there's 
different projects of different genres and dramas, etc. You are competing with a finite amount of money. And so you are, in a sense, competing against those other projects. So you've got to be the best. You've got to be noticed. And quite often, you know, the projects that haven't got made of mine, when I look back, I sort of can see why. Um, you've got to stand out. And that can be for a number of different reasons. Um, but the whole package at the end of the day has to, you know, hold water. You know, I've made films that have been rushed into production and it's caught me out later because <coughs> they, you know, the script hasn't, wasn't actually good enough. And that, you know, when you finally see it, you know, there's nothing you can do about it at that point. You need luck and hard work and initiative. And I started off, you know, very self-indulgent. You know, it was sort of projects that I just liked and I didn't, I wasn't thinking about whether they were commercial or, you know, who, who the audience was. It was all rather naive. It's just sort of what I liked and I'll try and make it. And over time, you know, my sense of what good writing was and, and mediocre writing or a good plot versus a, a, you know, an original plot or an unoriginal plot or, you know, characterizations and dialogue. Not to say I'm, there are projects I've passed on that have gone on to be huge, successful movies. It's not, I don't claim Such as? To, well, I, don't, the, <laughs> I Sorry, spent the some time in the States and, uh, you know, I passed on, I mean, dumb and dumber. <laughs> um, and I and and I went, you know, my reaction was, I mean, you know, it was the cultural divide and whatever. But I was like, these people are so stupid. Why does anyone want to see this movie? Obviously, <laughs> that was the point of the film. It was, you know, went right over my head. And then I had a wonderful, um, my very uh, smart assistant back in the day um, was adamant that I met this young British filmmaker who had made this, you know, for no money, this sort of um, movie in London about this cat burglar. And he had this script that was brilliantly written, all told backwards, and, you know, and I must meet him. He was getting everyone attention, and, and eventually, yes, I'll meet him, and the script was quite good. And I told him that, you know, I liked his script, but no one would go and see a movie told backwards. And that director was Christopher Nolan, uh. and that movie was, uh, you know, whatever the, the one... Benjamin Button. Yeah. Anyway, but, you know, these things happened. Um, so how would you describe the role of the producer in film? It depends on the movie. I've had a different role on all the films that I have produced. The way I like to work is basically the full package. So nowadays, my ideal scenario is that I have an idea that I then find a very talented writer who then elaborates and builds it, turns it something beyond my expectation. Similarly, with a director, you then get on board and it takes another whole sort of leap. And then, you know, cast, budget, and then I raise the money for it. But I always have a sort of, you know, a creative uh, attachment, an emotional attachment. I'm a, you know, the, the origins lay with me. I mean, collaborative, never just mine, but I have, you know, I've been a producer when I've just facilitated or just raised the cash or been the sort of for hire. And it's too hard work to not have an emotional involvement. So I need a sort of creative stake in it nowadays. But if anyone's got a burning question right now they want to ask Damien as we make our way through our starter, please do. Just pop your hand up, introduce yourself and fire away. David Slay, um, Damien, you said you, you tend to get an idea and then find a writer to develop that with you. Um, what if a, a writer-director has, has a kind of very strong script already, script idea, would, would you still be open to an approach and a pitch? Yeah, yeah. In that no, I, I mean... You know, I'm open to get my t material from everywhere, and I've worked with a lot of first-time writer directors over the years. Um, you know, my preferred way now is not to say I wouldn't work with a first-time writer director if, if, if I found something I wanted to pursue. Um, but but in terms of someone else's project, no. I I mean, I get submitted material and I read it, and just rarely do I commit. Mainly because I'm you know I'm very much a one-man band, and I don't have time to spread myself thin. So, and, and my preferred way of working is to find something that I've come up with. But that's not to say that I would, you know, not consider someone else's work. I'd be foolish not to. Yeah. 